Hello everyone, I'm Shekhar from Momentum Lab. Today is the 11th day of my Momentum Investment Journey. Now in this weekly review, I'll cover two things. One, we'll take a look at the portfolio. And secondly, we'll see how the markets are performing. And in this uh, video, I'll also want to show you guys how the different sectors are performing. Let's look at their charts. And we'll also see how uh, each sector is performing with respect to the benchmark index Nifty and with respect to other sectors. So last week was pretty bad. And uh, we had a drawdown of close to 7%. from the uh, all time highs so thereby we have fell from a level of uh, 115 in the nav to almost on 106.2 and right now we are in a negative territory of alpha meaning we are underperforming the market as of now and that is by 420 or 452 basis points so these are momentum crashes that are inevitable uh, whenever there is a change in trend uh momentum stocks are the first to fall and we'll have to live through this because there is no way of eliminating uh, these momentum crashes there can be some practices that can be done maybe like asset allocation or targeting the volatility or maybe choosing the kind of stocks which are having less volatile we'll discuss that later of how can you construct portfolios which uh can eliminate to some extent the uh momentum crashes i right now i'm following a simple uh, rate of change momentum strategy so this is part and parcel of the strategy and coming to the markets um let's look at trading view to see how the markets are performing so let's see the market cap by nifty first so we'll take a look at the daily chart and then move to the weekly so right now we uh, on the daily chart nifty seems to be in uptrend but the friday closing was pretty bad the thursday closing even though it was in a proper solid green uh, it looked more like an index management meaning the breadth was very weak most of the stocks uh had a decline but the index managed to make a up move or a, make a green candle so that was surprising indicating that there is um, uh only few stocks which were able to pull the index like the heavyweights but majority of the stocks were not performing and on friday the nifty clearly had a downtrend and it can be seen clearly in other indices also like nifty junior which in fact fell even below the 21 uh, day moving average it was pretty strong so far nifty junior but this also succumb to the uh, correction over the last week and same is the case with small cap micro cap as well as the mid cap indices in fact even gold had corrected on friday and uh, interesting thing to note is that it is not specific to india we have also seen the other markets across the uh, world also correct during the last week even the s&p 500 uh, index of the us also corrected last week especially in the thursdays and friday so let's see how the overall market uh, uh, shapes up from uh, next week onwards Now, if you come and take a look at the uh, Nifty 200, which I regularly uh, follow, that has also made a massive uh, red candle on Friday, and now it is uh, it is on its way to uh, touch its 21-day moving average. It doesn't look like the correction is over because none of the indices are uh, anywhere closer to its uh, nearest key moving averages, like 21-day moving average. So there is an expectation that some bit of correction still might happen over the. coming week uh, let's see how it happens and in any which case we have our exit plan ready uh, in case the markets turn uh, southward and now coming to the sectors uh, on friday all of the sectors ended up red there is no place to hide but uh, it doesn't show the complete picture there are some sectors which are outperforming even in this kind of turbulent uh, markets now how do you identify these sectors you can go one by one and see which sectors are doing good and which sectors are not performing well or there's a simpler method or a better method to actually see uh, which sectors are doing good then that is called as uh, rrg or relative uh, rotation graphs if you remember in uh, some of my earlier videos i referred to what an rrg chart is and how is it uh, how can one access an rrg chart i've shown a couple of examples of uh, strike website uh, hosted by india money uh, india charts so they have a uh, they had a platform where you can uh, take a look at the rrg charts so the rrg chart is very simple but uh, very effective in understanding visually uh, how the sector rotation is happening or which sectors or which stocks or which assets are performing well with respect to a benchmark so let's just take a look at uh, the rrg plot for uh, some of these some of the uh, sectors so i've taken couple of sectors like uh, um it fmcg gold uh, bank infra and reality now i've compared these sectors with respect to nifty 50 now to understand this uh, rrg plot there are two things here one on the y axis 
we have momentum on the x axis we have the relative strength relative strength is nothing but the ratio between the particular asset that has been selected let's say in this case for example cnx id and we compare this with respect to nifty 50 over a period of time now during that period if the relative strength is improving then those stocks or those assets are marked towards the right hand side or in these two quadrants if its relative strength is worsening with respect to nifty 50 then they are marked in these two quadrants now while we are measuring the relative strength with respect to nifty 50 or the benchmark we are also seeing whether uh, they are progress is it improving or is it decreasing or it means that uh, let's say they have they are doing well with respect to the benchmark but are they continuing to outperform the benchmark or are they starting to underperform the benchmark thereby losing momentum so we also see whether the momentum is upward or downward if the momentum is upward and the relative strength is also good it means that those assets are continuing to outperform the benchmark or ideally these are the kind of assets or stocks or sectors that we want to invest in there can be certain cases where even though the relative strength is good but the momentum can fade momentum can fade to a certain extent again they can recoup and then start to outperform again so these are some of the stocks or sectors which consolidate and again make an up move so it doesn't always mean that only stocks or assets which are in the top right quadrant are really good ideally they are they are really good but uh, it doesn't mean that we only have to invest in those stocks stocks can undergo a natural uh, progression from a leading stage to a weakening stage again they can come back to a leading stage sometimes they in fact do a even longer cycle from leading to weakening stage and from weakening stage to lagging and then finally improving and then make a comeback to leading now to traverse this journey or path of what it has what a sector has followed what we do is we usually map out the tails of each of these assets or let's say the tail can be of length of four or five or six uh, duration time periods so we we can track how has the movement of the sector uh, has been over a period of time now that's the uh, basic understanding of an rrg plot so let's look at uh, these sectors that i've chosen at randomly so i've taken it fmcg bank gold reality and infra you see that uh, fmcg and it are in the leading quadrant meaning their relative strength over a period of time has improved and during this time not only the relative strength has improved and that it has started to increase or the divergence with, uh, with respect to the benchmark has started to uh, increase meaning they are doing or performing well even better and better so the moment was also uh, there well, let's uh, quickly take a look at the charts to understand uh, what do we uh, mean by that let's see what is fmcg doing now you can see that let's let's take a look at the weekly chart because this rrg plot i've done on a weekly basis you see that the fmcg uh, sector is outperforming uh, in terms of absolute performance and also is uh, is having a very good momentum let's also plot with respect to nifty so that we can compare how is it doing uh, in relation in relative strength terms so you see that uh, nifty with respect to nifty fmcg was in a correction mode or underperformance mode but since couple of months especially like let's say last three or four months it has started to buck the trend and slowly started to improve so the time period in which we choose the rrg plot also plays a key role if you're looking at a shorter interval maybe like let's say of one month or three months and then plotting the rrg uh, then it will show a different picture but if you're plotting a longer period or let's say six months or maybe one year or, or two years then it might show even different uh, perspective so even if, if you take a longer period then that is an ideal case to uh, visualize any actual trends that, that are shifting uh, between the sectors a shorter uh, duration will only give uh, uh, an indicator indication in the shorter uh, time frame but not in the long, uh, longer time frame for this rrg plot i've taken a time period of uh, 12 weeks so a window of 12 weeks meaning roughly it comes down to three months so over the three months with a tail of five so with a uh, three month period i've compared uh, so if since we are in uh, mid of july so you can take it from um, uh, mid of march onwards so mid of march or april onwards you can compare what has been the uh, improvement in relative strength as well as the momentum so we have seen that the relative strength with respect to nifty since we are, it is a ratio chart it has improved and also if you look at standalone of uh, its uh, momentum it, momentum also of uh, fmcg has improved over the last three months so it indicates that uh, this is a sector to watch out so you can have multiple in, uh, inputs 
uh, or data points. One, you can look at RRG plot to see which sector is doing well. And then you can look at the charts itself directly to see uh, what are the charts saying. And then you can also do a ratio chart to see or uh, to confirm whether uh, there's a, in fact, uh, indeed a change in trend or outperformance with respect to benchmark. So when you combine multiple data points, then you get an uh, even better picture. So right now in our momentum portfolio, there are no FMCG stocks and uh, same is the case with I, uh, even IT as well. Uh, IT is also doing good. And uh, in fact, even a longer time period, it has given a breakout in terms of um, cup and um, handle kind of a pattern. Now, it needs to be seen how this will pan out because the IT uh, RRG plot says that it is close to weakening. So that can also be seen in the candle of the previous week. It's not that strong as compared to FMCG. FMCG is looking pretty decent or strong. Let's see the FMCG candle. The candle also is pretty solid. So the trend in FMCG is quite uh, bullish and the IT is also seemingly bullish but not... Uh, uh, as great as FMCG. It, it, also, it is also an indication that if FMCG and IT stocks, I haven't checked pharma, but I'll check pharma also. If these kind of defensive stocks are performing well, then it means that the money is shifting from uh, risk on more to risk-free mode. So they basically play more defensive. So that's a change in uh, or a change in sectors that is happening that is we are seeing right now. So let's see how it pans out in the next week. Uh, and if you Take a look at the other uh, sectors and um, uh, indices, right? Gold base is in the uh, improving quadrant. Gold base, if you see, it was always in the improving quadrant. Now let's also look at its chart. So gold is in this tight range and maybe with respect to Nifty, it looks like it is uh, on par and is able to hold its momentum. So we'll have to see how gold fares uh, as you're aware, gold often has a negative or low correlation with the Nifty or equities as an asset class. And if gold is outperforming, then we have to see how does the Nifty or the equities perform. And the other uh, sectors are uh, bank and reality. So bank and reality are improving. Let's see the bank and reality charts also. So the bank also looks good. It is consolidating pretty tightly uh, in this small range. So it has shown a good uh, improvement over the last three weeks. And now it's consolidating in those ranges. And that's what we see in this RRG plot that it was leading at some point uh, three or four weeks back. And recently it has come very close to a lagging state. But the, the uh, immediately uh, preceding week, uh, it has improved. Thereby, it, again, it went back to the improving state. The infra is a sector which has now uh, come back to the lagging uh, uh, phase. So that's how you can plot the RRG and infer uh, uh, and get the insights on what is the sector rotation that is happening. I'll share this um, uh, code base with you guys so that you can uh, change a couple of parameters and uh, run it yourself. So there are only a few parameters that you can change. That's all you can leave it as this. One is uh, the kind of sectors or stocks that you want to hold. It, it doesn't mean that you only um, do the RRG plot for sectors. You can take even stocks as well. You can also include uh, other assets as well, like I've used gold. So you can change this. For example, let me change this to... Uh, so I've changed uh, the sectors into stocks. Uh, we have we taken uh, RVNL, MassDoc, JSW Energy, Cummins India, BDL, and Vedanta Limited. So these are some of the stocks that I'm holding. And this is not any recommendation. You can take any stocks of your choice, which is in your portfolio or the stocks that you want to um, uh, take a look at. So once you include the stock names and then you run this query, so you will get the output. So you see that uh, apart from the output, you also see a small table where it will tell you the status of that particular stock. So we see that uh, there is... Uh, this stock, which is lagging, which is Cummins India, as you can see, it is in uh, this quadrant. Uh, it has come from the leading quadrant to uh, a lagging quadrant. So let's quickly take a look at its chart and infer what it is saying. So yeah, so we have seen that yes, Cummins India has made a massive fall. And no wonder that the RRG plot says that it is uh, weakening uh, with respect to both relative strength as well as momentum. Now, if you see, there are a couple of stocks uh, which are in the leading quadrant, even in these uh, falling markets. That though, those are MassDoc, RVNL, and JSW Energy. Let's quickly so, uh, see their charts also. 
So this is my stock. It is holding up uh, pretty good after its run up, and it has not cut it by that much. And uh, let's see what is RBNL doing. Same is the case with RBNL. It is holding up. And what was the other stock? JSW Energy. Yeah. So even JSW Energy also is making a smaller uh, correction, not that uh, volatile. So these are the stocks which are still holding up and are leading in these turbulent times. So if there are some stocks which are able to uh, resist. the fall even in a falling market then these are the strong stocks that uh, ideally we should uh, be holding on to or picking up and some of the stocks which are uh, lagging these are the ones which ideally we need to uh, exit so that is it about the rrg plot with respect to the stocks so let's go back to the sectors ones and see if we are seeing uh, stocks from it and fmcg in our uh, momentum list any hope we are not being in rebalance today but i just wanted to see if there is any uh, new stock coming up and yes i did notice couple of it and fmcg stocks like um, uh, vipro mariko kpt tech mm, there is also infi somewhere infi policy bazaar nokri etc so let's wait for the rebalance there's no hurry if these trends if the sector rotation is indeed strong and not a blip then this uh, will continue and we'll see the same set of stocks uh, during the rebalance if it is indeed a small blip and not a strong trend then these stocks will fade away and will not be there when we do a rebalance so that's the advantage as well as disadvantage by following a, a fixed rules based investing that we are waiting for the stocks to prove themselves that they need strong stocks and not uh, change stocks too frequently uh, based on the whims and fancies of uh, shorter term trends so that's it guys from my side and uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh conduct a separate webinar for someone who's interested uh, to know more about rrg plots both technically as well as uh, from the uh, coding point of view how do you build uh, an rrg plot on python and uh, especially helpful for diy investors because these rrg plots if you are purchasing from some of the websites they might be charging uh, for accessing these plots so better to build it uh, yourself and uh, take use of this and secondly uh, i'll be sharing this code as well so you can access this code and you can make small tweaks to this code and run it by yourselves and another point that i wanted to mention was i have written a small uh, write up on uh, asset allocation and some of the best practices i'm intending to do a deep dive on the asset allocation uh, maybe sometime during this week around thursday so stay tuned i'll be sharing that uh, document uh, in this youtube a uh, description you can uh, take a look at it and give me your feedback so comments or suggestions on the uh, asset allocation paper thank you